deep bites. So I've been asked to do a question on our question and answer session. I've been asked to make a video on deep bite and posture please as there is no information on the topic online. Deep bites are one of the most misunderstood of all the different types of malocclusion. Now to explain this first of all we've got to understand that malocclusion is one symptom amongst many of incorrect facial development craniofacial dystrophy. So as a face downswings drops down and back, the space for the tongue reduces. And I'm always amazed at how adaptable humans are, and particularly the human face. Craniofacial dystrophy started in the privileged clique as soon as society developed and could support a percentage of its population on milk and honey, and then has worked outwards as we've developed. It doesn't really seem to hit the, the group, the masses, the, 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 the over 50% demographic, till probably about 1960, when we've got marked malocclusion and a lot of people not getting their wisdom teeth in, you know, that 50% mark. Don't forget, the breathing is the most important function anyone does. It's top numero uno. So what the objective of any home human is to support breathing and relocate the tongue in this reduced tongue space away from its ideal position into a sort of into into another position and it's this relocation into these various different places that gives rise to the different patterns of malocclusion that we see in my humble opinion and there are only so many different places where you can rest your tongue so when we talk about the different classes of malocclusion as has been reported you know this is generally within orthodontics we talk about in the horizontal um, or sagittal plane we talk about the class one this is the correct one class two where the bottom jaw set back and class three where people often think the bottom jaw set too far forward or sometimes they're even looking at the maxilla maybe that's set back that's another point another area or they talk about in the vertical dimension where you've got class one an anterior open bite sorry and you have a deep bite like this so that's representing the teeth so those are the classic different definitions within the profession you know with an orthodontist now there's got to be a certain amount of speculation about what I'm saying because I only really know where my tongue is some of the time and it's really difficult to actually know what's going on inside someone because the, the actual act of looking Looking in there will almost certainly change the position of the tongue. I remember some cine radiography experiments by Hedges in 1969 where he was putting barium, getting kids to swallow some barium so they coated the tissues in barium and then was basically taking an x-rays as a cine film because well, that was a massive dose and of course you just can't do that with normal people to understand how normal people develop now so there's got to be some speculation in what we think is going on inside this box. And remember also that function is what you do for a moment some of the time, but what really counts is posture all of the time. And what you're going to do in a clinical setting when someone's got a camera focused on you or cine radiography focused on you is going to be different from when you're sitting there, you know, scrolling or watching the television or when you're having dinner in a relaxed position on the sofa rather than sitting at a proper table. So we've got to think about posture, which is often neglected because it's co complex and difficult to record. Now there are only so many comfortable places that your tongue can rest in so that you can have a comfortable airway and breathe with what we call a non-embarrassed airway. A really interesting word that. Now for example what you could do is you could take your tongue drop it into the bottom jaw and hold your jaw forward uh, and that's really going to open up your airway at the back and that's a really great let's say strategy so that you can breathe comfortably and that tends to cause a what we refer to as a class three malocclusion often with the top jaw not being well supported so being underdeveloped clearly it depends on percentage wise where the tongue is most of the time of course we can have our more centrally positioned tongue where it's generally not poking between the teeth in a swallow, recruiting then the facial muscles, usually with a bit of freeway space, um, which I think is a modern thing. 
And this leads to the class one. And then of course, you can have the other position where you drop your tongue forward, and that leads to the class two position. Then you can have an open bite situation. So those were the on the sagittal position, and then we look at the open and closed bites. So if you lack tongue space, what you can do is you can extend your tongue forwards with your teeth in closer contact than the class two, uh, pushing your tongue forward between the front teeth. Because your tongue is there, you're going to create a space between the teeth. And that's referred to as an anterior open bite. Now, then you can have what I refer to as the opposite of this, is a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll pull their tongue back and it spreads laterally at the back. So what you're doing, you pull your tongue back, extends laterally, and then that's a good way of maintaining a open airway, finding a place to place your tongue. Now that means the tongue's gonna go between the teeth on either side. So I refer to this as a bilateral poster open bite. But the problem here is you don't tend to see this because your dentist or orthodontist or even yourself are going to bite your teeth together when you do an examination. Now, biting together means you overclose. And this is not how you rest. It's realistically an artifactual position. It's a position you just do for taking records. And in this overclosed position, you don't have a bilateral posterior open bite. Because the teeth are separated, you can overclose. You've got a gap between the back teeth and they then come together and then the front teeth overclose. Now clearly, this is artifactual to take records, but you need to eat. So you are going to be going into this position to eating. So in a way, it is in the, let's call it an extended range of what you would normally do. And of course, you then don't see the posterior bilateral open bite. You just see the deep bite, which is deep, what you, the, you know, the question was asked. So now of interest is dentists often note that the condyle, the jaw joint, is displaced backwards when they make an examination, which is clearly because what you've done is you've overclosed. That's moved the joint too far back. And often what dentists will do, or jaw joint specialists will do, is create a splint that goes between your teeth. In a way, they're replacing the joint back into a centralized position, which is effectively reproducing the resting position. Now, these malocclusions can be some of the hardest to treat with the highest rates of relapse because this pattern of swallowing is really comes very ingrained. And of course, we talk about we artificially talk about dental areola and skeletal effects. Well, I don't know if individual bits of bone understand whether they're part of a dental areola or skeletal part. I think generally what we've got is a more severe and a less severe problem here. Now, <clears throat> when I was treating this, I would modify the Dahl's um, splint system and I put anterior splints to correct this so that you would bite on to blocks on the back of the front teeth. But that's going a little bit out of this explanation. And clearly there is so much more, um, especially when we're looking at the common head and neck postures related to this malocclusion and the other malocclusions, and how people do the compensation and maintain an open airway with some recruitment of the muscles behind the tongue and in this area here. And I think that there's some other health problems associated with that. And in a way, deep bite is often one of those problems that is associated with other head and neck problems, most notably, clearly, um, the um, jaw joint issues. Um, I will go into this more, but I think that's enough for one explanation.